Today I will show you how you can draw these kinds of 2D landscapes in Photoshop easily. So let's start. Hey guys, it's Neman and welcome to another really fun Photoshop tutorial. A while ago I already did a tutorial on how to draw these 2D landscapes and after that you sent me a lot of messages to do at least another one with a different example. So here it is. Today I will show you how you can draw these kinds of 2D landscapes again, different example. And for the guys who are watching this for the first time, you can go and watch the previous one on the link right there. And just to let you know that this is really easy, anyone can do it. All you need to have is a little bit of patience. So without further ado, let's jump straight into Photoshop and let the fun begin. Right guys, we are here in Photoshop and today we will start with this blank piece of paper. The size of the document and the orientation completely depends on your own choice and your own preference. What kind of drawing do you like to make? So I will go with this portrait orientation and first I will start by making a new layer and name it sketch. And this is completely optional. I will now make a really rough sketch just to show you guys what we will do and to have it as rough guidelines to final product, final drawing. So here I will choose a brush. I will go with the black color and uh, I will make brush a little bit smaller like that. And I will start by making landscape line. Maybe I will use this brush just it's easier for me to make a sketch. So this is it, maybe a little bit more higher. Yeah, like that. And here I will just draw some kind of landscape, maybe like this, maybe more like, maybe more like, let me see, more like this or this guys, it's completely, completely optional. It's completely up to you. However you want, you can draw it. So let's stick with this one. And then at the top of these hills, I will go and make a lighthouse. So lighthouse will be something like this. We can always change later, but this is just a rough sketch. So something like this with this part and the roof here right and we will have this small house here as an entrance okay and maybe a few windows here something like that would be pretty cool some trees here and there and We'll have the light here and the light beam from the lighthouse. We'll have a moon right there, maybe a few birds like this. And this will be a night scene. So we will have some stars on the sky. And this is pretty basic sketch, real rough sketch of what we will do. Right, so now I will lower the opacity and I will start with background. So first I will go and create solid color Adjustment layer and choose a color. So this blue is pretty nice. Let's start with a little bit brighter. I can always go and change this because it's undestructive uh, type of colorizing. So now that I have a background color, I will start by making this really nice hill right there. So let's create a new layer, name it hill. And I will choose a little bit darker color, probably something like, probably something like this and go with the round hard brush, make it a little bit bigger, press and hold shift and just draw a line. And now I can use a lasso tool and just follow these things however I want. It doesn't need to be like that because this is just a rough sketch. And because we have this blue color as a foreground color, I will press Alt or Option key on a Mac and backspace to fill this with this color. And this is pretty cool. We can always change this, add a little bit more elements and as you can see, do something like this and uh, or erase or whatever. This is really having fun right here. So this is our hill. Now let's make the lighthouse. So first what I like to do, I like to go with the really white color. So completely white color. And for the lighthouse, I will use shape tool. So this is a shape tool. In case you're not familiar with this, I have a full tutorial on the link right there. And with the shape tool, I will start with the rectangle tool. I will go not to shape, not to path. I will go to pixels. And here I will draw just rectangle, just this type of shape, right? And now I will put it below the hill because I want this to be behind the hill like this. And I need to transform it. Control or Command T, make it a little bit bigger. Right click, perspective, and just narrow these two points a little bit down, 
like that. Press enter and this is our base of lighthouse. So I pretty much like it. Now I will create a new layer. And again with this, I will create this part. So as you can see with the space bar, I'm moving this freely and continue to adjust the size. So you can see now that I have this pinkish line as the middle line. So that means that those two elements are aligned. In case you're using older version of Photoshop, I will show you another trick how you can align those elements. So for example, I will have something like this, maybe a little bit like that. So they're cool. But if you're using older version of Photoshop, maybe you didn't align it properly. So you move it like that. Then you need to select both layers. So like this, go to move tool and click this middle align option. And this is it. I will move it to the left. All right. And uh, I will move this a little bit down. Then I will use a brush, this hard brush. Okay. And with this, I will just make those two strokes and fill this. So this is my base shape of the lighthouse. Then let's make this upper part, create a new layer again, rectangle uh, shape tool, rectangular shape tool. So probably something like this. Let's find the middle here. Oh, middle, middle, where are you? You're here. Okay. I missed it a bit. So let's, okay. This is cool. And then make a roof. To make a roof, I will need a triangle type of shape. So I will go right here, choose the polygon tool and just choose number of sides. So three is for triangle and this is how it looks. And I will hold shift and rotate until this is properly orientated. So this is cool. Now let's see. Oh, I need to make this on a separate layer. So new layer again here, triangle like that. Now press control or command T move it right there, move it down a little bit more. And now I will transform it. I will move this down by holding shift in new version of Photoshop in order you don't need to hold shift. And then I will just stretch this a little bit and put it in the middle, something like this. And this is our roof, maybe a little bit wider, a little bit taller, something, something like that. So this is pretty cool shape of the lighthouse. And let me see. Now we need to deal with this square right there. So this is our square. I'm not naming these layers because I will merge them later. So I don't need to name them right now. I will go with the rectangular marquee tool and just make a square shape like this. Okay. And just press delete, right? I have a hole here then. What I like to do, I like to make another shape like this in the middle and fill it with white because white is foreground color, alt and backspace or option and backspace on the Mac. And this is really nice guys. So this is something that I like. And uh, now we can group all of this and name it control command G, name it lighthouse. And we are not done with the lighthouse. So this is our base shape. We need to make those small as you can see those small entrance like a house there. So we will do that now. And before that, I like to create, I like to create, actually, this is not like this is lighthouse base without house, without the entrance. So what I like to do here, I like to create a solid color adjustment layer, go to the reddish type of color, go outside the group and clip it to affect only the group to clip something to another layer or group, just press alt or option key and click in between those two layers, right? And now I will go to a layer mask, go with the black color and just remove parts that I don't want to be white. So practically, let's start with this, probably something like this, then, oops, something like that. And something like this is cool. And here I want to have probably white somewhere here, or maybe just like this, a little bit more up. Okay, this is pretty cool. And this uh, triangle part, I will just press control and click to load as a selection and I will paint it out. This select control command D and this is, this is pretty cool. I'll just fix this a little bit. So this is how my Lighthouse looks so I can go here to the group, press control or command and T 
and maybe I want to make it a bit wider. So just a second, I need to go with the adjustment layer because it's there. Clip it to this layer. So maybe I want this to be a bit wider, like, like that probably. This is perfect. And what I like to do right now is to make a house. So house needs to be in the front of everything. So this will be like entrance or small house. Right. And here I will again go with this rectangular tool, white color and just make small house right there. This is pretty cool. Right. And this small house needs to have a roof. So again, I will go with a triangle and right there, new adjustment layer like this. Perfect. So this is roof. Control or Command T, make the roof a little bit smaller, a little bit wider, put it in the center like that. And there we have it. So maybe I want to add a little bit more red to, to this part just to see the house better. This is pretty cool. And just to refine these things a little bit now, basically I can, I'm moving them a little bit. So. This is pretty cool. And now with the house, what we want to do, I want to go right here, create a new layer, again, rectangular tool. But this time I want to have black or something like that color. I like to have small window right there and the entrance, the door, right, right here. And also I will on the same layer, I will go with really small brush and just paint with darker color right here to the roof. And this is pretty cool. I know it looks too bright, too saturated and doesn't fit uh, good the purpose here, the look here, but we will make it really good in just in a few moments. So this is this is really cool. Now let's let's go with the light beam. But before we make a light beam, I like to make the light bulb it's inside. So now we can group everything here, right? And name this lighthouse. This is pretty cool. So our lighthouse will be like that. And uh, first, what I like to do is to make lighthouse darker. I will go with the exposure layer, adjustment layer, and just make it darker like this for now. Let's stick with this. And let's make below everything light source, right? I will go with elliptical murky tool. I will go with some bright, yellow color like this and just make a light bulb something maybe a little bit bigger yeah, or a little bit smaller okay so this is it fill it and uh, i want to make another layer about that choose darker color and just paint around like it's shield for for the back side so light will only go We'll only go at the front and here we will add a light beam. Light beam, all right. And for that, I will go again with the same color and with shape tool, rectangular shape tool and just make a light beam like this. Why not? So, wow, this is pretty cool, like a laser light beam. Then press Ctrl or Command T, right click, perspective, make this, this parts a little bit smaller. Okay, but this parts right here a little bit wider, probably like, probably like this. All right, press Enter. This is pretty cool already, start to look really nice. And we can put this light beam into overlay blending mode. Now it looks a little bit, a little bit uh, greenish because of the blue background, but we'll fix that later. But Let's, let's leave it for now like this. Just for now, we can lower the opacity. This is what we can do. And uh, let's make some windows on the lighthouse. So windows above the lighthouse here, because I don't want to put in this group because everything will be darkened by this layer. So windows, I like to go here. And again, I will use everything the same. So same color for the windows. So this is one. Okay, this is one window right there. 
Oops, I need to move it to the center. Then I will press Alt or Option key and just draw it, uh, drag it down to duplicate it. And this is pretty cool. And now let's make a glow for the window, right? For the glow, I will put it in a linear dodge blending mode, something like something like this probably. And I will use really soft brush, a little bit bigger, more like that all right with maybe 10% opacity and just add that glow from the window like this see pretty cool yeah this is pretty nice so before and after I really like it I can add that glow right here to this and also what we can do with the light beam it's too harsh now we can go to a light beam go to the filter blur Gaussian blur and now we can blur this a little bit. This is too much just a little bit So something like 4 or 4.5 or 8 or 7 doesn't matter. So something here I pretty much like it and now let's make a moon. So now we have a mess right here. So everything In here, what is this? This is Everything here actually I will group it again and name it Lighthouse Final, you know that final, final, final. All right, so lighthouse, lighthouse final. This is pretty much cool. Now let's make a moon. Moon will be behind lighthouse, right? And I will go again with the elliptical marquee tool. Just press and hold shift to make this nice circle. And I will fill it with a little bit brighter color. So something like this. Fill it and there we have it. We have our moon, but the moon, I like to have another glow here. So glow for the moon. Let's let's name moon, moon glow, all right? And I will do the same. I will go with uh, linear dodge blending mode, maybe like that, really soft brush, 10% opacity and just, see, this is pretty nice and and now we can go to the lighthouse, to the light beam and put this into overlay blending mode. And let's let's go with the sketch layer, hide it. And now I can go here and add hue and saturation adjustment layer, clip it effect, not only that. Maybe I can add more saturation and change it more towards the orange, a little bit maybe brighter. So we can we can play with we can play with this. But I pretty much like like this. Also, if you duplicate this, if you make a copy of it you will have stronger effects. So just to let you know that. Also, I can make this a little bit wider. Press Control or Command T and again perspective and just make it a bit wider maybe. I need to make sure that this is not hitting the edges here. Right, I pretty much like it. And now what we need to do, we need to draw a tree. So to draw a tree, I already showed that in a previous 2D landscape tutorial we made a tree brush but this time we will not make a tree brush we will use again the same thing we will use a render and tree and render those trees so it's really cool way to add some realistic trees in photoshop even silhouette trees so now let's collapse this let's group this and name it moon right and where is our hill this is hill so this will be tree so to add a tree we will go to filter render Three and this is pretty cool dialog box right here. We can choose among the many different tree types. I will go with elm tree, and we can choose the leaves amount. So basically, we can customize our tree however we want. So I will go with something. Let's see, something like this is pretty cool. I don't need to worry about the light directions and everything because we will make this to be a silhouette. In case you're using old version of Photoshop and you don't have render tree option, you can go and find online any kind of tree silhouette that you like and continue with projects. So basically the point here is to make a tree silhouette. Right, so now that we have a tree, as you can see right here, I will create a new layer and name it tree number one. This is our base tree. I will go to base tree and control click on it to load it as a selection. Then I will go to this layer tree number one, go to the brush and choose this color right there of the hill. So Alt and click to choose the color. And now I will press Alt or Option and Backspace to fill it with that same color. I will hide our tree, go to this one, make it smaller, Control or Command T 
to make a smaller tree. Everything is in a rhyme. And this is pretty nice silhouette, as you can see, guys. So now we need to define tree size, probably, probably like this. Let me see. Yeah, this is pretty big tree, maybe a bit smaller. Okay, so it will be right there. Then I will copy this Alt or Option and just move it with the Move tool selected right here. So I will move it, make it smaller, Control or Command T, right click, flip horizontal, just to have a different variation. Of course, you can go and uh, add different type of trees, etc. Transform it even more. You can go with like, let me show you. You can move this a little bit right there, and then I will go to Edit and Puppet Warp, expand this a little bit, add one here, one here, go to this one and well, play with this a little bit. You know, I already did a tutorial on Puppet Warp, so if you are not familiar how to use this, check it on the link right there. So this is another tree as you can see, or maybe I can just make it like that. This is pretty cool. Then I can just make a copy of this one, select tree number one, Put it right there, make it a little bit smaller and rotate it like that. And maybe another one, maybe maybe go with this one and put it somewhere here, maybe make it even smaller like this and rotate this one, flip horizontal actually, right? And put it here, maybe rotate it a bit. So this is our tree and so on and so forth. We can populate this, let's, let's add even more right there just change how this looks right and add another one smaller down here or maybe down down there flip horizontal and pretty much this is it of course guys you can add a lot more trees it's completely up to your preference do whatever you want but i will stick with this just to save the time for this tutorial okay so this is it and now what we need to do we need to paint some lights to the scene so Let's first group everything here. Control Command G, name it tree. Trees actually. This is hill. And what I like to do, let's go first to the lighthouse. Let's play with the lighthouse. And you can see this, this is our light added to the lighthouse. So we need to add some kind of a rim light on the right side of the lighthouse that is coming, actually that is a light that is coming from the moon. So we will go right there to the exposure layer, see? And we will paint with a black color of it so i will go with harder brush like this 100 percent opacity and i will just go and paint so we can do like that that's one way another way is to select the lighthouse go inside and let me see select this press and hold shift and holding control and shift together click on this click on this click on this right this is one way then go to select modify contract so i want to contract this selection a little bit so to make it a little bit more narrow so here we need to choose the amount of pixels so let's try with a four maybe it's too, no it's not too much so as you can see the selection is a little bit narrow then we can feather it go to selection modify feather and let's feather it for maybe three pixels let's see three and then what we need to do is to invert the selection because now if you paint right here we will paint on the inside. So shift control I or shift command I on a Mac and this is pretty cool. So now we have inverted selection and we can paint the light on the outside. We don't want light to be right there. So just the outside parts and also here, something like this and the roof. I will roof the roof like, like this and press control command D to deselect it and now manually Wait, before we do that, I just want to fix this. I just press undo to fix this a little bit. So now deselected and I want to go with the roof and just manually go like that. Same here, this is pretty cool. And here we can do something like, like that and here we can do something like like this we can use softer brush and just just paint right so you can spend a little bit more time painting those details but as you can see this is really nice so we have impression that the lighthouse is lit from the moon we need to do the same for the landscape 
for this hill and for the tree. So this is pretty easy. Let's go back, collapse this, go to the hill and create exposure adjustment layer, clip it to affect only the hill and make everything brighter. So something like this, invert it, control or command I. And now guys, what I like to do, I like to use the lasso tool and just make those, those kinds of selections. If I want to add selection, I need to press and hold shift and just make it something like irregular selection. It doesn't need to be proper regular one. So here, somewhere here, as you can see, maybe right there, like this, this will be in the shadow probably, right? And now we'll press Alt and Backspace. This is pretty cool. And also we can add smaller elements here if we want just to add some like small bumps here and there, maybe one here, etc. So all the backspace and this is really, really nice. Now let's do the same with the trees. So with the trees, I will go out and drag this to make a copy clip it to affect only the trees, but I will fill this with the black control and backspace just to erase everything. And now we need to play with the trees. With the trees, we have the same thing. What we can do, we can select all the trees, control, click, and by holding shift and control together, we will add to the selection like this. Then we can go to, again, select, modify, contract, and do it by two probably. Let's see. Yeah, by two is pretty good. And without feathering, without anything, I will now invert the selection shift control I or shift command I go right there and just paint like this. As you can see, this is pretty cool. So let's go with this. And guys, we can hide this selection if this is irritating us. So I don't like to see it. I will press control H or command H and I will just hide it. And as you can see, the moon is hitting this side of the tree. Pretty, pretty nice. Right, just paint like that and then we will add some other details here. So I don't want to go to these trees because they are in the shadow from the lighthouse. But now I will deselect everything, Control or Command D and manually paint some small details here, like small leaves that are Litten, maybe a little bit smaller brush. That brush, and this is actually a rounded tree, it's not like a plane. Of course, guys, I'm rushing now a little bit, but you got a point. What you need to do here is just to add a few details here and there, some imperfections, and some leaves that are shining on the moonlight. All right, so this is pretty cool for this example. And you will have that impression that the moon is actually behind the hill and the trees and the lighthouse and everything is really nicely lit from, from the moon, etc. And this is really, really nice. Now what I like to do, I like to add some stars. So let's collapse this and let's go down behind everything, name this stars. And now we'll show one really cool way how to add stars. So. I will use a regular hard round brush like this, white color, right? And I can just do like that or even better, I can go press F5, go to brush properties, check shape dynamics, go with the size jitter all the way up, go to the scattering, scattering all the way up, go to the brush tip shape, go all the way up. So I have more spacing between brush strokes and go to transfer and just do a little bit of that. So now if I, I'm painting, I have something like this. But now I will just paint a few strokes here, there. I, I will not go like one big stroke. So this is pretty cool. Just add a few stars in the sky. Okay, so this is really nice. And what we can do here, we can go and make some more like that. All right, and we can lower the opacity a little bit like that. And also I can go right here, create a new curves adjustment layer, clip it to affect only the background color, 
make it darker like this and invert it, control or command I and now go with the gradient. And with the white color and the gradient, I will just make the top darker like, like this and down the bottom a little bit darker. So as you can see, this is pretty much cool. And now let's add some birds. So this is, these are stars, this is birds. And I will definitely just paint the birds. So brush, I'll use this one. And with the black color, see, I'll just paint birds right there. This is, this one is a little bit smaller. It's more behind. This one is like that. Maybe another one right there. So see, we have some birds flying here and there. And this is again pretty cool. And now we need to deal with this part. So this is the most fun and most easiest part to deal with the bottom part from the hill. So what I like to do, I like to group everything, basically stars and everything to the top and put it in one group, control command G. And this is everything that we draw, right? This is our drawing. And I will duplicate this, press Control or Command J, make a copy of it, go inside and find the lighthouse beam. So that light beam that we made, I will put it outside the group because this is the only thing that is on the, that has a blending mode. So this is it, I will close this. And this is part from the beam, I don't need it. So just want to turn it off because when I pull the beam outside, this affecting this thing down below, so I don't need this. And what I like to do here, I will go and press Control or Command E to merge this into one layer. So this is now everything into just one layer, as you can see. And I will select both beam and the drawing, press Control or Command T, right click and flip vertical. And now I will just go with this, something like that, press Enter and move everything below the drawing so just below here all right and lower the opacity that's too much so something like like this i'm lowering the opacity and also the light beam i can lower even more the opacity so it's like a water reflection and also what we can do we can go to the filter blur gaussian blur and blur this a little bit more so this is pretty pretty cool also i can do with the light beam filter blur gaussian blur and blur this too. And now we have water reflection. What we can do even more to play with this even more, we can go to drawing, filter, distort, and we can go with a wave. And here we can add this kind of water waves. We can play with these settings. So however you want, let's see this. Yeah, this is pretty cool. And then we can go to do the same with light beam. I would just press control or command F to repeat these steps. And now we'll go to filter, distort and maybe ripple. So ah, just those small ripples, let's see. See, this is pretty cool. We can do the same with the light beam, press Control Command F. And yeah, they are small, barely visible. Yeah, now we can see it. So this is really nice way to make a reflection and also we can desaturate this. So we can go right here, create here and saturation adjustment player, clip it affect only that and desaturate this, especially because of this lighthouse or we can go more with the red. So red, this is red, red a little bit, yeah. And yellow. Okay, this is perfect. And guys, this is really, really nice. We are almost done. What we need to do more here, I want to add some trees uh, on the sides and just to add a boat with a fisherman in the boat and we are done. Right now we'll create a new layer. Again, name it tree. And go to filter, render and tree again. And this time I will choose another tree. Let's go with let's go with this one. Let's see how this looks. Okay, this is pretty nice. Leaves amount. Let's use a little bit less leaves. Okay. Then I will press OK. I will have a tree right here in a few moments, like that. And I will go again with the new layer. Click, control click on the tree and go to this one. Let's hide this and fill it with fill it with this color, right? Like that, like we did previously. And what I like to do here, I like to move this tree right here, maybe to rotate it a bit, just to have some kind of leaves right there. 
and just copy to another one. I can rotate it horizontally. Just make some random effect right there. Okay, this is cool. And then I can copy, more, uh, select both of them and move them with Alt. Just copy them, transform them and put them, put them to the left side right there. So let me see, like, like we have some kind of cool position somewhere here. All right. And also let's, let's go to these two to move them a little bit. This is the upper one. Yeah. Let's go with the upper one a little bit more up. Or, or let me see, let's see the other side. So hmm. let's do it like that. Let's put this one down and let's put this one up. I just want to have this gap for the trees there. Okay. And now it's everything matter of playing with the settings, etc. So this is cool. And now what we can do, we can merge everything together, all those four trees, select them, press control command E, right? So these are foreground trees. Okay. And uh, we can again, add these kind of uh, rim light on the tree, exactly the same thing, go to the exposure, clip it to affect only the trees, make it brighter like that, invert the mask, click control on this, go to select, modify, contract and contract by four, for example, invert the mask, go right there and with a brush, just let's see, okay, just paint, paint these things, all right? Just paint out, same here. I just want to paint this. Let's really leave these things out. Deselect, yeah, this is pretty cool. And what we can do, we can go and again, add few things here and there. But now what I will do, definitely, I will go and merge those two together, Control and Command E, go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and see, I just want to blur them because they're out of focus, they're outside. So one more thing before I like to undo it. I don't like so bright. So this is okay. And also I like to go to the mask and feather, feather this. It's maybe too much, so let's see. I'm not a big fan of this rim light, how it, how it looks. Maybe, maybe just a little, let me see. Or, I, or without that. I'm not sure, let's go without that and let's see, go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and just blur the trees, yeah. Without that, definitely, so something around nine. This looks cool, I just want to have some kind of framing here and I pretty much like this and I can always go and maybe move it more inside, more outside, however I want. I can add this, but no, let's delete this. So. This is cool. And now let's add a boat here. So I went online and find this, found this uh, free image of uh, fisherman. So I will just paste it right here down below control or command T make it smaller, put it somewhere inside here and I can go with the uh, hue and saturation adjustment layer, clip it to affect only that one. And I can go make him more silhouette, more, Let's see more, let's colorize this more bluish, desaturated silhouette like that. And also I like to erase this part of a fishing line. And here, what we can do, let's make impression that this is already in the water. Let's create new layer and I will use white brush, really small, just to make some kind of now these, this need to be down below, these ripples. When you put something inside, let's, let's use dark run to create some kind of shadow effect. And this is me really rushing out. Like I want to be fast here, but this is pretty cool. I will press control or command T and just 
change it perspectively like this, just make this more narrow. And yeah, we have that impression, we can make a copy of it. It's not so visible, but it's there, I know it. And also what we can do to this guy, to both, we can do the same thing that we did with uh, the trees and everything, we can add rim light. So exposure, boost the exposure a little bit, but just for this guy down there, just for the boat. What about the guy? What about this guy? Why are you not making yourself brighter? So we need to do that differently. Let's create just an empty layer and let's go with a white color. Yeah, definitely like that with a white color and just, just add the rim light to this guy. See? And to the boat here too, so. And here, I just like that. We can do on this fishing or how you call it fishing I don't know I don't know the English word but this whoop to zoom but I don't want to spend too much time on this adding too many highlights here let's erase this so this is practically okay let's do a little bit more on this guy just a little bit more Okay, so this is really nice guys and practically guys, this is it. This is really nice. We created a started out of completely blank piece of paper and made this. It's really easy. As I already said at the beginning, it's pretty, pretty easy. All you need to have is the patience to just go slowly and create this or anything that you want. And beauty, uh, beautiful thing here is that we have, for example, the background color in completely uh, separate layer and we can double tap on that and change the color. So maybe we want to make some kind of a sunset scene more. As you can see, this is pretty cool. So we have blue version, night scene, we have day version, like a sunset, like this is sun, it's setting down. Of course, because the sun, it's again on the separate layer here on the drawing. And uh, actually this is now moon. We can move it a little bit more down, like it's real sunset, etc. But now then we have a problem here maybe we can delete it from here. You got a point. So you can go and create either day or night scene just by having these settings change a little bit. So as you can see, it's really nice. Read guys, so that would be it for today. I really hope that you like this episode and that you learned something new, fun and interesting from this one. In case you have any kind of questions regarding to this tutorial, please leave me down there in the comment section below. I will be glad to answer it. Also guys, if you want to help me to make this channel even bigger and better, you can do that by visiting my Patreon page, the link is down there in the description, and of course you will get some things in return like my PSD file, this PSD files and all others, etc. Check it out on the link right there. And also if you like this episode, if you appreciate this kind of contents, press the like button, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe in case you're not already and also ring that bell to get notified about all the future episodes. Have fun experiment and see you guys in my next fun tutorial. Bye bye.